All right, welcome into the studio. We're gonna do something a little bit different today, and we're gonna compare three different motion systems. We're gonna compare a delta, a core XY, and a bed slinger together for both speed and print quality. And uh, how we're gonna do it is we're gonna throw them up here on the bench, and we're gonna start a print at the exact same time. I'll have another camera going, we'll record all of it, so you'll get to see it. And uh, the filament that we're gonna use today is Polymaker's Polysonic PLA. So that's a particular filament from Polymaker that is designed for high speed 3D printing, designed to melt fast and cool fast. And uh, so yeah, let's get those printers up here on the bench and get started. Now that we have everything up on the bench, well, not this bench, it's in the bench, yesterday's bench. Um, I was going to have all the printers here and try and do this, but they're huge and it just takes up a lot of space. So all of the B-roll that you're seeing and all the printing took place yesterday. And here I'm sitting at the bench, I'm gonna go over all of these printers, we're gonna talk about them, we're gonna compare them, and I have the print results from each of them here. One is a Delta, and that's your FL Sun T1. The other is the Bamboo P1S, which is a Core XY machine, and the third is the Creality Ender 3 V3. Now, that's just a traditional bed slinger, right? except it's not. It's actually a Core XZ machine. Now, if you know what a Core XY machine is, and, and let me explain that to you really quickly for those who may not know, a Core XY architecture basically means for a machine like the Bamboo P1S to move the print head or the tool head um, in any given direction on the X and the Y, there's two motors that are working in tandem uh, with a sophisticated uh, configuration of belts and pulleys. Unlike a traditional a uh, bed slinger that you might be used to, another type of 3D printer, where there's one motor that controls the X, one motor controls the Y, and one motor controls the Z. So now with a Core XZ architecture, it's kind of exactly like it sounds. Instead of Core XY, meaning that it's using a series of motors to control the X and the Y, this is using a series of motor, a couple of motors, and some belts and pulleys to do that exact same thing, but with the X and the Z. So it means that the Y is able to sling back and forth, but the X and the Z are connected with those motors and belts, making, them, making it very fast and very efficient. I wanted a model that would just not only show off the printer's speed, but also its accuracy. So we have some rounded edges, we have some sharp edges, uh, we have some overhangs on these threads, and I figured that that would also allow us to do something like this, right? So we can find out exactly how accurate what the tolerances are of these printers uh, by having a couple of pieces uh, that are printed on the same machine and seeing if they fit together. Let's talk about the machines here first before we get into the print quality. So just stick with me. On your right, my left, is the Creality Ender 3 V3. And I have to say for a medium-sized machine that comes in priced, I think, somewhere around $349, it has an advertised max printing speed of 600 millimeters per second. Um, I think that the overall printer experience, especially with the new firmware updates. So I updated all the firmware on all the machines to make sure everything was good before we did the test. I also upgraded any slicer settings and profiles and things like that. But this machine, after having played with this machine again with the new firmware that's on it, this Creality Ender 3 V3, man, that is such a nice machine. Now the next machine, the one in the middle, that's the Bamboo Lab P1S, and that is a Core XY machine, um, same middle range kind of sized uh, 3D printer, enclosed, has the potential for AMS. I think the Bamboo Lab P1S comes in priced at $599. Now that is a very capable machine, it's very fast, it's very accurate, and uh, like I said, of course, it has the potential for AMS, right? So, so that's there. All right, so then you have the machine on your left, my right, the big tall one, and this is the brand new FL Sun T1. Now, this is a monster machine, not only in physical size, but speed. This machine right now, um, I think early bird pricing is $499 for the T1, and it is boasting speeds up to a thousand millimeters per second. And I guess I forgot to mention that the P1S, that is 500 millimeters per second. So think about it. Ender 3 V3, 600 millimeters per second. P1S, 500 millimeters per second. And the FL Sun T1, 1,000 millimeters per second. And so that was the kind of fun thing that we're doing today is we're gonna compare these three machines printing and then to see which one finishes first, which one's faster, and then of course, the print quality. Now, here's the thing. 
inevitably every time I do one of these comparisons, someone in the comments comes along and says, well, you didn't use the same color of filament or all the printers weren't facing due south or, or something. There's always something. But mind you that this is not a scientific comparison. This is more a comparison of the user experience, right? So it's what the slicer is like, what the printer's like, and what the print results are like. 99% of people just want to load filament in a 3D printer and then get really cool things out of it. That's all they want. Okay, so now let's look at print quality. Now, the filament that we used in each of these, like I mentioned earlier, is Polymaker's Polysonic PLA. And that means that it's a PLA that can just melt faster and cool faster, and it's really designed uh, for these faster 3D printers uh, like we have here in the studio. Actually, I got a question for you. What printer do you think finished first? FL Sun T1, Bamboo Lab P1S, or the Creality Ender 3 V3? Well, it's obvious. The FL Sun T1 finished first. Um, all three of them were started at the exact same time, and uh, you should be seeing B-roll of me doing that, you know, in the slicer and, and things like that, and kind of launching them and getting them started. But the FL Sun T1 finished the fastest, and it finished in, I believe, 43 minutes. That is insane. 43 minutes for this machine. Now, what machine do you think finished second? Hmm? Bamboo Lab P1S? Pretty fast machine, right? Right, pretty popular. Or the Creality Ender 3 V3? Which one finished second? Well, this one. The Creality Ender 3 V3 finished second. And it finished three minutes ahead of the Bamboo Lab P1S. Now, when I started these, I pre-calibrated all the machines. And then when I started the prints, I skipped the calibration steps. So none of these machines did a bed leveling before they printed because I wanted them to just start immediately. I didn't want to include... Uh, the uh, the calibration in the print time so this machine finished second and it was about at exactly one hour and this machine finished about three minutes later at an hour and three so i think that that's a pretty interesting result uh that uh, small enough that obviously the t1 has has trouble getting up to speed on something as small as this but still dominated coming in at 43 minutes compared to an hour for these other prints now you might be thinking speed what about print quality because obviously the faster you go, well, are we going to give up some print quality? Well, I think you're going to be shocked because uh, looking at the print quality of the nut here first, um, I can tell, I can tell that this printer was printing faster um, than these others. There are slight speed patterns um, on the vertical walls on this bolt. Um, I think cooling is incredible. That's one of the things that the T1 is kind of famous for is how loud it is and uh, that, that noise is cooling and it has no problem cooling and i hope you're seeing b-roll of this because it is fantastic that this thing was printing in upwards of probably six to seven hundred millimeters per second uh, to accomplish this and it looks absolutely incredible and uh, bottom surface looks great walls look great top surface is fantastic um, there's no stringing um, on this one there's a couple of missed bits of filament but uh but other than that, it's really great. Threads together perfectly. Um, matter of fact, this might be the best set of threads on all of them. And uh, But this was printed in the fastest amount of time. So the fl t one is probably going to be an, just an amazing machine uh, for prototyping. And, I mean, and quality prints. Just so good. All right. Next machine is the Bamboo Lab P1S. Now, there is a, a little bit of stringing on there on the inside the bottom surface looks absolutely fantastic top surface uh looks nice and clean um the overhangs for the most part the overhangs look really good i would say almost perfect except for there's two two little corners here on the nuts that uh that might have some little kind of weird cooling artifact that just might have to do with uh um, where the layers started and stopped the vertical walls on it look really clean um, i would say as close to perfect as you're going to get from 3d printers nowadays which isn't um, a surprise really because that's kind of what bamboo lab is known for right so they have machines that print around you know three to five hundred millimeters per second and uh, just produce really really good results so all right now third this is the Creality Ender 3 V3. Now, this one came in as far as speed second. It is the least expensive of the 3D printers. So that doesn't surprise me, right, that it may not quite be the same quality as the others. Looking at the nut here, we'll start with the sidewalls. Uh, sidewalls look clean. There is some under extrusion, some over extrusion a little bit kind of, I mean, nothing, nothing that's bad that I would, that I would consider uh, a really negative for this machine. Um, now, 
when you turn it upside down, first first layer looks great, but you can tell that there's cooling trouble. And that that's where this machine really kind of falls falls out of the race. And you can see that the overhangs it just had some difficulty, and that's where I would say that this machine is lacking. And uh, so that is something that's really frustrating because uh, cooling on a 3D printer nowadays is really, it's not that complicated. And it's not a, a huge cost to have really good cooling on a 3D printer. And I really feel like this machine, the Creality Ender 3 V3, at a price of 349 they could have just, just handled cooling just 10% better. And that machine would have been absolutely perfect. And uh, that's kind of that's kind of a it's a missed opportunity. It's a sad sad thing. So now let's talk about the overhangs on the threads here. The Ender Three V Three handled the threads absolutely beautifully. It looks really good. I don't think it had trouble at all. And of course, everything threads together just perfectly. Now the Bamboo Lab machine, um, I would have to say the Bamboo Lab machine is about the same as the Creality Ender 3 um, as far as quality goes. A um, little bit of stringing on there. Um, that's okay. Not necessarily too bad. Um, but threads work just perfectly. And then we have the FL Sun T1. Now the threads on this guy are probably the best. And I can see that there's some blobbing that kind of happens every now and then. Um, and I don't know exactly if that's just where the seams are uh, for this particular print. But I have to say that this is probably the best threads of them. And I think I know why. So that delta is really good at going in circles. And uh, we watched the previous video that I just did on the T1 a couple of days ago. Um, it kind of excels at uh, going in circles and doing loops. And it is fast and it is smooth and it is perfect in those loops. And that's what you're getting. So threads, probably the best on the FLC, FL Sun T1. I think Bamboo and Creality did about the same. So anyway, there is your print results. Now, here's the thing. Does it shock you? Did you think that one of these printers was just going to dominate um, and come out the clear winner? Or did you think that uh, one of them was just going to uh, be a complete failure and flop in comparison to the other two? Because you're talking about machines here, um, $499 for the T1, you're talking $599 for the Bamboo uh, P1S, and then you're talking $349 right now for the Ender 3 V3. Tell me in the comments below, um, if you had to pick one of these machines today to buy, which one would you pick and why? Because I'd really like to know. Now, my personal feeling, I think I would probably go... Um, if I had to choose one of these machines today as an all-around general purpose machine, I would probably go with the P1S because it has the four-color um, AMS option. For the machine that I would pick for just flat-out fun experimenting in, well, yeah, it would be the FL7 T1. That machine right now, this one here, is absolutely incredible. An, an amazing machine. So fast and fun to play with. Um, but... The Crowdy Ender 3 V3 at 349 um, is a really, really good machine. Um, the sad part is, is that uh, so many machines have come down into that $300 to $400 price range that now you're looking at a lot of machines uh, to compete with that. Like I said, even the Bamboo A1 comes in uh, close to that price range and it has a potential for AMS. But uh, anyway, I think this test was fantastic. I think it was really good to see three completely different architectures um, put up here on the bench to see them all printing and moving at the same time and producing incredible results. Keep in mind, 3D printing is changing so darn fast that this wasn't even possible a year or two ago. You have three completely different architectures running at amazing speeds producing this kind of result. Incredible. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And we will see you on the next one.